Merhaba friends, QEMU on macOS Hardware Accelerated. This guide is for Intel based Macs and not for Apple Silicon Chip. The accelerator we are going to use is the hypervisor framework which is inbuilt into macOS. We are going to use the command line. What I'm going to show you should work on any recent version of macOS. To install QEMU on macOS, we first need Homebrew. What is Homebrew? Well, it's not a local coffee brand. It's a package manager for Mac OS. To install Homebrew, head over to brew.sh and copy the link given here and paste it in your terminal. Here, we are going to paste it. And to be true, guys, this is going to take some time. So make sure you have a brew for yourself too. All right, so enter it and hit enter. This will ask you your username administrator password. So enter your as administrate password, which says checking for sudo access. Once you enter your password, it will download all the files that are required to install a package manager for your Max OS. And for that, the prerequisite is to install the Xcode command line tools. Now that we have installed Homebrew successfully, let's move on to installing QEMU. First, I'm just going to turn the analytics off for Homebrew. I mean, this is my personal preference. You can do it if you want to. Now to install QEMU, all we need to do is issue a command, brew install QEMU. Yes, guys, it's that simple on macOS. Again, this is going to take some time, depending upon your internet speed and processor speed. So make sure you have a cup of coffee or tea or cold drinks or whatever that suits you. Yes, it took some time. So I'm going to be back when the QMU installation is successful. And it seems now we are done. Now that we have installed QEMU successfully on macOS, I'm going to install Manjaro Virtual Machine using the HVF Accelerator. To do that, first I'm going to check the present working directory that I'm in. And I'm in my home folder. So to keep things separate, I'm going to create a directory called QEMU. And I'm going to CD into that and keep all my QMU related files here. All right, so first off, we need a hard disk. So I'm going to use a Q QMU image command to create a hard disk in the format of QCOW2, which is the preferred format. And I'm going to name it very imaginatively, <laughs> Manjaro.QCOW. I like to keep things simple. Uh, so I hope, and, and I'm going to give it 15 gigs of space. Hit enter and our hard disk has been created. Okay, if we check, we see that we have a hard disk. Now, I have already downloaded the Manjaro's ISO. We need an ISO to boot, um, to create a machine, right? So I'm going to move it here from my downloads folder, check again, and we have two files. All right, I'll, now we're going to create a script called startmanjaro.sh, and in that script is going to live the code required for QMU to create the machine. I want your full attention, guys, 100%. Don't look even anywhere else. All right, starting off. So I'm going to say QEMU system, and I'm going to pass some arguments to it to help QEMU create my machine. And I'm going to pass them one by one, and I'm going to explain. First off, I'm going to say I'm giving you 4 gigs of RAM. So M is for memory, 4 gigs of RAM. Next up, I'm going to say that the display is going to be of type Word IO. It's going to be a VGA and it's going to be of type Word IO. The driver is Word IO driver. Now, uh, the display is uh, going to be again de uh, default display and I'm going to sh make sure that my cur cursor is shown. So I'm going to say show dash cursor. So we have four gigs of memory, display driver is Word IO and we want the default display and we want the cursor to show. Next up, I we want a USB port on our machine. And to make things easier, I want that USB port to emulate a USB tablet. So I'm going to say device USB tablet. All right, this backslash is for the separate lines. Okay, next up is the pro number of processors. And I'm going to set, give it two. I have four, so I have given it two. If you have 16, give it. All right, next up is the CD-ROM. We want to tell QMU, this is the CD that you I want to boot from. So I have copied it from the uh, folder there that is the iso that we are going to boot next up is the hard disk that we want to install this iso2 so we're going to say drive file is equal to manjaro.qcow 
and the interface IF stands for interface is going to be word IO. So I'm going to use the word IO to read this hard disk. All right. Next up is the CPU type and the CPU type. I'm going to pass my host to CPU. And finally, I'm going to set the machine type to be Q machine. I'm going to say type is equal to Q35, the latest machine type and the accelerator the things that you've been working waiting for is going to be hvf that's it guys pause the video see clearly okay now if we check we have three files so to make this file executable i'm going to change the permissions to chmod plus x start majaro.ch now i can execute it so all we need to do is we need to start so i'm going to say bismillahirrahmanirrahim to invoke, to invoke the grace of Almighty Allah and to get rid of Satan. All right, we have started Manjaro.sh using QMU with HVF on Mac. And yes, we have booted. So I'm going to boot with property drivers. Lift off. We have a lift off. <laughs> okay. So again, get a cup of coffee or do something because Manjaro booting time is going to take. Uh, sometime because it arranges the package manager and once we launch we come to this screen and I'm going to click on disable launch at start and I'm going to double click and we are going to start Manjaro installation from here on it's going to be relatively simple for people who have installed Manjaro previously but there's one step that I need to show you so please hang on and I'm going to click yes this step See clearly we have a bias boot. We don't have UEFI boot as of now. In this video I haven't and I'm going to try it in the next video. So I just want to enable swap and with no hibernate. So I'm going to set swap with no hibernate and it calculates 1.5 GB for swap. Bootloader location is fine. That is all we need to do because we are going to use this entire 15 GB for our Manjaro installation. All right, so looks good. Let's click on next and we will need to enter our information and click on next and this is the overview of what is going to happen looks good to me click on install and you will not be able to undo these changes that is what we are here for guys so anyways click on install now again cup of coffee cup of tea cup of cold drink cup of beverage whatever you want if you have home brew so get beverage and we are all done so click on restart now but it's going to restart from your cd rom so we need to get rid of the CD-ROM from the QAMU file, the start.qamu.sh. So I give, I give, it, give it a control C from the uh, command line and I, I'm going to change, remove the CD-ROM here. So come here and delete this line and we are all good. We have already installed Manjaro, right? We don't need the CD-ROM anymore. So that's a dot slash start manjaro.sh and now it's booting from the hard disk yes guys see it's so easy i mean i uh, i just want you guys to play with qemu and use it for whatever you want and now when it boots up the screen's resolution is bad but i'm going to fix it in front of you to 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 your liking and i mean i mean guys i have like a 1200 by 800 screen so choose the screen resolution that suits you. I mean, see, we have internet also, right? Package manager, updates are available, new kernel update. I'm going to update a kernel in front of you. So search for display configuration. And once this loads up, I'm just going to drag it to the side a little bit. See, ref refresh rate is 75 hertz. That's pretty cool, yeah. So select the native resolution of your Mac OS. I have like 1280 by 800, so I'm going to select 1280 by 768 and yes doesn't it look cool okay we want to keep this configuration we are good we are good 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 see 75 hertz i mean i don't have 75 hertz on my monitor i mean qmu picked up 75 hertz all right so yes we want to keep this uh, resolution of refresh rate of 75 hertz and it looks good to me i mean we fix the display which is the best thing and we have internet so what I'm going to do is as of right now, I am just going to make this full screen. So it looks as if it's native on my hard on my machine. I mean, I mean, sure, I'm interested. I mean, if I had shown you this earlier, if I had shown this earlier today, I mean, 
who have, would you have I been mean, thinking that, I mean, if I had shown this earlier, would you be thinking that I'm showing you QEMU? No, guys, okay. So the first thing I'm going to disable is compositor. Why? Don't scream, guys. This is a very weak machine. I thank God for whatever I have. So I have disabled compositor. And in the terminal, I'm going to update <coughs> my machine. So you can see that is a fully functional machine and there are no gotchas. I know we respect the privacy of others. We think before we type and we have great power. So we know we have great responsibility also. So I'm not going to update this entire thing in front of you rather than the entire update because it's like two GB of update. I am going to update the kernel. So I hit control C and we interrupt signal was given. So I'm going to see the Manjaro package manager and we are going to load up the kernel and we see that we have a new kernel. So let me browse down. Uh, we will see actually we, that we have a new kernel. So let me browse down. You know, the mouse is a little clunky, but looks, I mean, uh, it works for me. So should, hopefully, yeah, it should work for you. I mean, this is a very, I mean, I, this is like a very weak machine. I said, I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. Four cores, eight gigs of RAM. So I gave it like four gigs of RAM and two cores. If you have a relatively modern machine, uh, you're going to enjoy Manjaro through QMU with the HVF accelerator. And trust me, guys, I mean, it, it works well. So I'm opening up, opening up Manjaro settings manager. And it yes, here is the kernel. So let me get rid of that. And here is the kernel. You can see clearly that we have the Linux kernel. So if we don't double click it, OK, it's a little slow. And OK, so we have 515. And what is installed is 513. So I'm going to update it. I'm like clicking on install and clicking on yes. Remember, guys, I mean, I showed you QMU on Windows using the Intel Hexam accelerator, and I was having problem with my mouse. It's that problem is not here. It's it's a little uh, wobbly, but I can click wherever I want. And the update is done. And I'm going to reboot the machine. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you that, yes, indeed, we have installed this kernel and it is running. So you see, we are good to go. So they click on uh, click on that button, which says shut down and we are going to restart it. Why am I doing this? Just to show you guys that we have a fully functional system and that I am not uh, showing you something bogus. Yes, we have booted. And let me check the kernel version, which we are running by going to package manager and going down to Manjaro, sorry, Manjaro settings manager. And it will take some time to open. Let's go to the kernel. And yes, we are running Linux 515 2 2.2. As you can see, fully functional machine Write down in the comments below what you did with this QMU, which machine you installed, how it went. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. I'll catch you in the next video. And you should catch me too, because I'm going to show you something really exciting in the next video on MaxOS with QEMU and, and, and the HVF accelerator. Take care. Bye-bye.